Hi everybody, and welcome to my seventh video on beams. In this video, I'm going to be solving the problem you see here with a beam that has no external apply loads, but it does have a weight that we're going to take into consideration. So the first step when you're taking a look at a beam where there's some sort of you know density function given to you, or you might be giving uh, some sort of a gamma function where that's Instead of kilograms per meter cubed, you're given it in terms of newtons per meter cubed or kilonewtons per meter cubed. It's all the same idea. What you want to do is somehow collapse this weight into an applied load, all right, a linearly applied load, because that's what it is, all right. The weight of this beam, given that the cross section area does not change, the weight will be a constant linear force across, and that's what we're going to try to figure out. So we know that the total weight, so this is force, total weight is mass times gravity. All right, and we can also write the total weight then is equal to the mass. Let's expand that. That's the density times the volume times gravity. All right, and we can expand that further and say the density and the volume is basically the length of the whole beam, I'll call that L, times width of this thing, I'll call that H or W, and then height. This, of course, is still volume, and then G. All right, and this is the equation we want. This gives us a total weight, but we want is some sort of, you know, weight per length, so we can just replace it with, you know, a force that's being applied like that. So what we do is we just Take the total weight, weight divided by the total length, and there you have it. That's the expression that you need to develop this sort of weight per length. We usually call it Q, so we'll call it Q again. What's the magnitude of Q? Well, in our case, we're just going to take our numbers and plug them in. Density, that's 600. Width. Height. Gravity will take 9.8. This turns out to be 9.8. All right, and you can check the units of this. This is kilograms per meter cubed. This is meter cubed. All right, so that's going to be kilograms per meter and then times G. That's kilograms times an acceleration. That's newtons, and we're still per meter. So it's newtons per meter. So we can redraw this situation as a beam that looks like this. So instead of our new beam here having any inherent weight, we're going to replace its weight by an equivalent external applied force. All right, and this is just like any other sort of beam we've done so far. All right, it's just a beam with an applied load. So this is how you're gonna, you gotta go through this little process here to collapse down the, you know, the weight or the density and collapse it down into this sort of distributed load. So you always want to make a total expression for the weight, as if you're finding the weight of the whole thing, and just divide it out by length. That's the easiest way of I, that I've found or that I've thought about it total weight and then for total length that gives you what it's doing along the whole way. So now let's just go ahead and plot the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. So we're going to need two cuts, one here, one here. I will choose to lose, look this way for this one and this way for this one. Call it one, two. But before we go into that, like always, we're going to need to find the overall free body diagram so we can find the reactions at the support. We need the reactions to find the bending moment and shear force. Alright, so I've taken this load and I've 
condensed it down into a point load here. What's the magnitude of that? Well, it's just going to be this times the entire length of the thing. And that's 16 meters. So 882 times 16. All right, then we can go ahead and do sum of forces and sum of moments. All right, now what's the distance that this acts? All right, because it's not just going to be, you know, at the support or something like that. When you have a distributed load, the load that you replace it with for the purpose of the overall free body diagram is always located at the centroid of the shape of the distribution. All right, so this, let's just re say that. So you have this distributed load, it's a rectangle shape. The load that you replace it is located at the centroid and the centroid of a square is right in the center if you had a triangular load it would be a third in from the end all right so in this case it's half of 10 plus 6 so that's 8. All right, there we go. So now we have our reactions. Let's move into free body diagram one, free body diagram two. All right, so what's the magnitude of this little bit of force here? Well, you can't assume because we collapsed it down to this big force for the sake of our overall equilibrium that you can still just keep that force out there by itself. Because in reality, you're analyzing this beam, not this beam. So every time you need to take this distributed load, so I already collapsed it here into this force. What's the magnitude of that force? Well, is this gonna be 882 newtons per meter times the distance. We've made the arbitrary distance x. This is simply going to be 882x. And once again, it's at the centroid of the distribution, which is still square. So it's acting at a distance x by 2 away. So we'll go ahead and do sum of forces, sum of moments. And I do my sum of the moments about the place where I made the cut. I just denote that V1 simply because if I would do it about this end or any other point, I would need to include V1. And I've just found what V1 is. So if I had made a mistake there, that mistake would propagate further into my moment equation. And I don't want to do that. So I take moments about here just in order to eliminate that possibility. So let's go right ahead. That's the force, and the distance now is just
All right, and then we have expressions for shear force and moment in the first piece. Now we've got to take a look at the second piece. All right, the second bit of the cut here. So let's get a free body diagram of that happening. All right, so we have pretty much everything we need here. There's two things left over. Well, this amount of force is gonna be our 882 newtons per meter times the length of this piece. Now, what's the length of this piece? Well, we're trying to take a look at the piece that exists just past this support of a total length, six meters. We've made our cut an arbitrary distance x away from this piece. All right, I haven't chosen to do x from the origin, I've chosen it to do it from here just so that later on when I plot my free body or my free my bending moment diagram that my equations are all based off of my origin being right there making it easier to plot each individual bending moment in shear force so this total distance of the original piece which you can imagine if I kind of draw it in as a phantom here this distance here is x and the total distance is 6 so this must be 6 minus x so that makes this must be 82 6 minus x all right so let's go ahead and sum up the forces in the y direction to find our shear force Okay, now we could find a bending moment, but I'm going to leave it off, and we're going to look at a little bit of our intuition to see what the bending moment is going to be. It's always a good idea to develop an intuition of what your bending moment is going to look like, and also the shear force. So let's just get, uh, we'll try to develop a uh, sort of colloquial way of figuring out what the shear force should look like, and then we'll develop you know, a rigid mathematical way that gives us the exact values. So I'll do that here, I'll do math, and just, you know, our way. So let's draw our beams in both situations. All right, so let's first do it just our way, in a way that we can sort of think what's just going on for the shear force and the bending moment, instead of always having to find an exact mathematical idea. It's good to get a feeling for what's going on before you have to calculate it, right? You shouldn't have to calculate something to get a general idea of it. So one thing that you kind of need to know, or in terms of which one's greater, is it's a reaction. So if R2 is you know, quite a bit bigger, almost, you know, five times bigger than R1. So we kind of need to know that. So let's start with our shear force. So we start at this end of the beam. Boom, we're getting gonna get knocked up, or that sounded funny. We're gonna get pushed up by this original, rea <laughs> this original reaction here by amount R1. And then as we go on, this thing is gonna slowly push us down. So as we go here, it's pushed us down, you know, a certain amount. This is slowly pushing you down as you go out. So it's going to be linear, right? So let's just get some lines here. And it's going to keep on pushing us down up to the point here. Boom. And also this reaction kicks in, giving us a huge amount of reinforcement up and above the normal. And this piece here is going to slowly push us down again. All right. Just like that. So this is kind of an intuitive idea of what's going on. 
Of course, this here is the original reaction, and then this here is the reaction at this other support. All right. And the bending moment, we can get one of two ways. We can look at what happens in the shear force, because the bending moment is just a graph that basically graphs this slope of this thing, or the, the slope of the bending moment graph is the magnitude of V, right? Because they're, this is the derivative of that. So at here, it's a pin support, so we shouldn't have any bending moment. It should start at zero. Then as we go on, we have a great slope, so it's going to be like quite steep. But slowly that slope is getting less until here the slope is zero, so it's flat. Check it out, that's parabolic. And then that slope starts becoming more negative and more negative, just in the same way it became positive. All right, so it's going to go down, down below. Because this distance here, call it A, and this distance here, B, A is always going to be less than B, all right? Or not always, but depending on this length of the overhang. So you get something like this happening. And then what happens here? Well, we know it has to be zero at the end again, because you can never have bending moment at the end. And it starts with a big negative slope. There's going to be no jump in the value of moment, because there's no discrete moment. And slowly that magnitude of the slope is getting smaller. So it's getting less steep. It's going to look just like this. So let's plot our real values and see how close to our intuition we got. All right. Oh, the second way you can find your bending moment diagram is to look at the profile of the sagging here. All right. Wherever your profile is like smiley, happy, it's positive. And wherever it starts to be concave down, it's negative. You can see here it's smiley, smiley, so it should be positive. And somewhere here it changes. That corresponds to this point right here. So let's plot our mathematical one. All right, now this looks exactly like we got, we got what we got here. All right, so it goes down, boom, the support bops us up, and then we'll go down again. So going to the moments, the first moment equation is what we developed here. So at zero, it's going to be zero. All right, and we know its maximum value is going to be when this one here is zero. All right, because if you take the derivative of this and then set it equal to zero and then solve for it, what position that turns out to be. It's going to be right with this position here. It's going to be x 3.2 in our case. It's going to go up to there. And then since it's some sort of symmetric, all right, this load is continuing to go down at 6.4 meters. It's going to go through and down. All right, now we don't have an equation for the last piece. We didn't develop it. But we know it's going to look something like this, so all we do is just draw it in and complete it. These values are never critical, you never really need to know them because they're not like the greatest value or the least value. Alright, so check it out, quite a striking similarity. Alright, and these are some pretty nice looking bending moment diagrams, I have to say it myself. Alright, so I hope this video helped you out, understanding how to deal with the weight. And I hope to see you in my next few videos on beams.